Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My, this is our Monday Night Raw show for the week. My name is George Coles and I'm riding solo. <clears throat> Let's get right into the show. First we have Stephanie McMahon coming out with the newly corporate made over Daniel Bryan. He's wearing a suit, got the hair slicked back, kind of reminiscent of when they made over Dude Love, which brought out Vince. A little back and forth, Vince basically says, if you're going to want this, you got to go all the way and shave off the beard. Which brings out Wade Barrett to do the haircut. I have no idea why. Hopefully Barrett gets a rub off of this situation and becomes like a main man goon. Who knows, he's a damn good wrestler though that doesn't seem to have any direction at this current time. Um, Daniel sits in the chair, eventually head bumps Barrett in the face and shaves half his beard off. And we got our, that's our opener for the night. Pretty decent opening segment. A um, couple things I wanted to point out on this. Vince kind of hedged his bets on this. Um, he named off all of Daniel Bryan's drawbacks. So if Daniel Bryan wins, it looks like, hey, he, he overcame adversity. If Daniel Bryan, you know, fails as a world champion or a main eventer, Vince McMahon could say, hey, look, I, I said it on national TV what his drawbacks were. So either way, Vince looks good coming out of it. Speaking of looking good, we have Rob Van Dam versus Alberto Del Rigo with the returning Roberto Rodriguez. I was very happy about this. Uh, Del Rio has become stale without Roberto. He adds so much to the character. My happiness was short-lived, though. Rob Van Dam picks up the win. After the match, Del Rio destroys Roberto. Who knows where they're going with that. Uh, obviously, the 30 days are up if he's back, so maybe this is some more punishment for him. Maybe so he misses the SummerSlam payoff. Who knows? But maybe, hopefully, we'll get Roberto coming back. I actually, thinking about it in hindsight, I'd like to see him come back maybe as a manager slash interpreter for Sin Cara. Somebody that's kind of floundering with no real direction might work. That could be the face, you know, that he works with. And hopefully he talks him out of the stupid fucking lighting. Anyway, pretty decent segment overall. And we come off of that, we have another great segment with Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow. These guys for a mid-card feud are absolutely selling it. These are two future main eventers. The whole thing with the briefcase, the wadded up paper, it, it was very good, very well written, very well done. I think these two are going to come out of this feud, both of them looking stronger. They already are selling themselves as the future of WWE main events. Now coming off of that segment, we had a guy that we thought a year ago was going to be the future of the main event situation, Ryback versus Mark Henry. Very confusing match. Um, we don't know what they're doing with Ryback. He's the bully sometimes, and then you got shit like this where he walks out mid match and gets counted out. Kind of reminiscent of Fandango. I'm not really sure where they're going with the character. Don't like it. I think they're doing a reputable harm to Ryback's character where no one really cares about him anymore. And that's a shame because he had. He had a rocket ship tied to him. They put him in the main event too fast. They didn't let him win in the main event. And then now they're burying it. I mean, it's a shame because the kid actually, for a power wrestler, he's pretty damn good. Next we had John Cena's retort, which if in the beginning of the show, best line of the night. Well, second best, but we'll get into the first best later. Daniel Bryan says, I'm a wrestler. John Cena's an entertainer. Talks about if he got fired, he'd be in the bingo hall, armory, all that stuff. Well, Cena comes out, cuts a semi-heel promo, gets absolutely no reaction from the crowd whatsoever. Everybody in the world, I think, is tired of John Cena's character at this point. It's time to move on from it. Let somebody else get a run at the top. Um, something I talked about with my buddy, the mass tweeter, uh, Bunkhouse Bob, Captain Hook, and the lovely Laura on the IWX show the other night on the podcast, and look it up if you haven't 
IWX Show, IWXShow.com. Check out their podcast. Great, great show. I call into it all the time because all the people there are friends and all of them are real good people and know a lot. Anyway, basically what we were talking about is the merchandising. The only thing that's keeping Cena, I think, in the main event is the merchandising. So, if you people want them out, I've said this before, start buying other people's t-shirts, start buying other people's plush toys, other people's action figures, other people's DVDs. I mean, it's the only way he's going to go away is if somebody else takes over that spot for him. Hey, I'm wearing a Daniel Bryan shirt. I'm doing my part. Anyway. <laughs> Now, coming at, we had Randy Orton came out, which brought out the shield. Daniel Bryan ran out to make the save. Brad Maddox came out and did his best Teddy Long impression and made a six-man tag team match for the end of the night. Play it. Nice little segment, nice way to reiterate that Orton isn't that far off of this main event pitcher. Don't forget about him. I liked where they went with this. Next, we had the Tons of Funk versus Eric Rowan and Luke Harper of the Wyatt family. Eric Harper, or Eric Rowan and Luke Harper absolutely dominated, destroyed a monster tag team in Tons of Funk. It was very impressive. What can you say about these guys? Uh, Luke Harper is a guy I really, really am a huge fan of. I think nothing but great things are going to come from him. Eric Rowan, I don't know as much about him, but I see a lot of potential in him as well. Two giant men with just a fanta fantastic tag team synergy. After the match, we had Kane come on the screen, basically cutting a promo on the whole Wyatt family, talking about we're going to get into a ring of fire, which is rumored will be an Inferno match at SummerSlam, which if you haven't seen one, they haven't done one in a little bit. They put basically fire strips around the ring, and the first person to get burnt loses. Don't know how they're going to pull it off in the PG era, but hopefully if they do it, they do go all out, and they don't PG it up. Now the next match we have, and that might be, as we've seen, King is slated, slated to go into See No Evil 2, start filming that, so maybe that's his out to get into that. Just saying. Next we have Caitlyn versus Layla, with uh, AJ Lee is serving as a distraction. Layla and AJ kind of doing their best Lay Cool impersonation. Um, I don't know why Layla's inserted into this. I really don't care to be honest with you. Layla's not been on my TV much. She's a good wrestler. Don't get me wrong. Caitlyn is a good wrestler too. Um, how many times do we have to see Caitlyn lose though? She's lost and lost and lost, so... I mean, the Divas division, they're giving us one match on Raw, maybe one match on SmackDown, maybe one match on Main Event. So they need to give us something to care about there and make it interesting again for me to even give a shit to even talk about it much on these, on these uh, reviews we do. Now, coming off of that, we're going to take a little break from the Raw show to go into our question of the week question of the week from last week was what is your favorite piece of wrestling memorabilia that you own? Now we have some answers from friends of ours. Uh, the first is from our friend Closure, Domus. My Raw Deal training cards with, Dan with uh, Chris Benoit putting the Crippler crossface on The Rock, Austin stunning Triple H, and The Rock people's elbowing Mankind. Good selection. Raw Deal was a very underrated game. I I know we have some other friends of ours that are some hardcore Raw Deal players as well. I didn't play it too much. I tried it a couple times. Not much for card games, but it, from what it was, it was simple. It made sense, and if I was into it, I probably would have liked it a lot. Next is from our friend Lou over at The Deadly Sins. He put, I would like to say my psychosis mask is probably the coolest thing I have wrestling-wise. A close second would be my Jericho autograph. Pretty cool stuff there. I, I think I've seen Paul wear your psychosis mask more than you, unless Paul has one too, but you guys could correct me on that. Next is from our friend Paul, also from The Deadly Sins. My favorite piece of wrestling memorabilia goes back to my CCG days. I have a raw deal card called Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 
that's signed by RVD, Sandman, Balls Mahoney, and Tony Mahmoud. Got it signed in person at a house show in Bethlehem. There you go. We got Raw Deal, obviously. We should make a comeback. We got two people right here that are saying they loved it. Um, I know Paul's really big into the Raw Deal. Um, I believe at one time, and if I'm blowing smoke, I'm sorry. Uh, I believe he was nationally ranked even. Great, great things now. Mine is is very simple for a lot of reasons. As you guys know, I'm a huge ECW fan. You might have seen this on our show. Um, sometimes it gets in the camera view, sometimes it doesn't. We basically use it to hide our notes that we put on the table. But this is my favorite piece of memorabilia. It's a 100% exact replica of the ECW World Heavyweight Championship circa 1988-1999. Um, there's a multitude of reasons why it's my favorite. First being that I'm a huge ECW fan. Second being it's probably the most expensive and nicest piece of memorabilia I own. Third being that my mother and stepdad brought, bought me this as a birthday present a while ago. and. You know, anything that connects me back with my mother, connects me to my stepdad, is even that more in pers more personal and more important to me. My favorite piece of wrestling memorabilia ever. Now, coming off of that, our question of the week for this week is, we'll keep it simple, keep it lighthearted. What has been your favorite wrestling family, whether it be the Samoans, the Hearts, um, the Funks, there have been plenty of them, the Ortons, the Rhodeses. Let us know what you think. Hit us up on our Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Put it down where? Down there in the comments. No baseball bat, no Gary. Now coming off of that, we're going right back into the show. Um, we have a guy that's returned not so long ago in Christian versus Heath Slater. Everybody knew the outcome of this going in. Heath Slater is nothing more than a jobber at this point. Christian picks up a win, making Christian look strong again. Hopefully building him up for his WrestleMania or SummerSlam match against Del Rio. Maybe he wins, maybe he doesn't. Either way, you gotta get the guy look you have to have him looking strong going into it. Speaking of some guys looking strong, we had CM Punk versus Curtis Axel. Pretty decent match. Curtis Axel I think is gonna get a good rub off of working with guys like CM Punk. Um, the interference with him going after Le Heyman, which brings out Brock Lesnar. CM Punk focuses too much on taking out Les or, or Heyman, which gets him attacked by Brock Lesnar. Fantastic set, set up for their SummerSlam match. The, the whole dichotomy of this, the, the Punk, the Lesnar, the Axel, the Heyman, everything has been spot on. I, I totally enjoy this. I'm thoroughly enthralled. Um, between this and Brian and Cena, this is going to be one hell of a SummerSlam that I'm definitely going to be all in on purchasing. And I think it's going to be great. I mean, they're setting up for some really great matches. Now, coming off of that, our next match of the night, we have the returning Kofi Kingston with pants versus Fandango, who's always wore pants. I thought Kofi looked really good in the return. Um, looks like he's dropped a little bit of mass. Don't know if that's on purpose. Don't know how much of it is he hasn't been able to work out. Looked good. Fandango. I wish they had a direction for him to go because he really is a good wrestler. He's a good personality. Again, if you people don't watch it, he was fantastic on Total Divas, his interactions with Eva Marie. They didn't go nowhere with it because obviously Eva Marie can't dance. Too far off this subject. Fandango, I mean, he's someone I think they could bank on and use as a credible going forward guy. Do I see him being a a, a main event, a, a WWE or world champion? Maybe not just yet, but he's going to be a solid mid-card, solid high mid-card wrestler, a U.S. champion, intercontinental champion for the next several years. Guy's definitely great in the way. Speaking of, and Kofi picks up the win with a Trouble in Paradise out of nowhere. Good return for Kofi, another guy I really like. Um, someone I think that they've had trouble pushing in the past as well. 
our next match of the night is the Real Americans, Jack Swagger and Antonio Cesaro versus the Uso Brothers. A little bit concerned with this. Not that the Real Americans won, that the Uso Brothers are losing so much. They built them up as someone to challenge the Shield, but they have them losing to the Shield over and over again. Now they're losing to the Real Americans. It's going to get to the point where we just don't care about them. Kind of like Tons of Funk. Kind of like several other guys and teams. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm partial to the Usos. But I just don't think they're wasting their talent doing stuff like this. Now our next match is something that we talked about before. That they're wasting the match on. I wish they would have kept it for SummerSlam. I'm not going to spoil it. I've read what they're both doing on SummerSlam. I wish the one-on-one -on -one match was what they did instead. We had Dolph Ziggler versus Biggie Langston. They're showing fantastic chemistry in the ring together. I like what they do with each other. I like the big man versus the speed man. Uh, basically, Caitlin cost Ziggler the match. It was a good match. Their match before was better. I really would have enjoyed a one-on-one -on -one for SummerSlam. Without saying the spoilers, we'll talk about that next week after certain shows have aired. But I think they could do a lot of things going forward. I think Biggie Langston has a very bright future. I think everybody else in the world is on board with me saying that Dolph Ziggler is one of the best in the ring right now. And his, his work with Biggie is only going to help Biggie get better. Now we have the main event segment of the night. The Shield versus Cena, Orton, and Bryan. Decent match. I um, thought it was okay. I think the ending with, you know, Orton hitting the RKO on both Cena and Bryan, teasing the cash-in with the Shield coming, looking like they're going to come back down. I thought it was good. Good Again, a good way to, to remind us that Randy Orton is in that main event picture and that he might cash in at any time. Um, I, everybody kind of knew that they're not going to let him cash in this closely to SummerSlam and ruin an advertised match, but still, it was interesting. Overall, pretty decent show. We're going to go right into the rating system. If you've seen our show before, we have a 1 to 5 rating system. 5 being the best, 1 being the worst. A 1's a great Kali, a 2's a Sheamus, 3's a Randy Orton, and here's where it's changed. Our rating system's changed a bit. A 4 is a CM Punk, a 5 is a Daniel Bryan. It used to be a 5 was Punk, and a 4 was Bryan, but Daniel Bryan's gone past him. Sorry, Punk, we still love you, though. I'm going to give this a 4, a CM Punk. I think the show was good. I think there was a couple things that could have put it over the top. Um, the, anytime you have Vince McMahon and Daniel Bryan in the ring, I think it's a great segment. Uh, the main event was good. Punk and Axel was awesome, as you heard I speak, heard me speak about the Wyatt family match, the Kane interaction. Some really good stuff. A couple more, just a little bit more, would have made it a five. But as it stands, a pretty good raw, very entertaining. Something they could build on going forward. And basically, that's all I got to say about this show. My name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Heel Heat.